Welcome back to another fantasy video with me, JD. You are joining me for the post round one team reveal and update. Woohoo. Uh, did I change much in my fantasy team in the lead up? I think I did. I think I did. I think um, there was a few picks I moved around and panicked on. Yeah, that's right. I think I brought in Steel for Amon. I think I got off Bonner, which ended up working well because I wanted to get Reed to Hoare and I wanted to get C Mac to Fife. Uh, but it meant that I had no Bonner at the end of the day. So, you know, you can't have them all. Um, uh, like in hindsight, could have moved Wines down to something like Bonner instead. But it is what it is. Oh, I've moved Grundy up to Gorn. That would have been sick. But no, no, no way I was ever going to do that, especially um, after what had happened. So what are we going to do in this video today? Well, we'll quickly go through the team. Uh, the ranking, which is, what, seven, top, top 8k. We're in the hunt. Definitely in the hunt with that. Uh, and then talk through just quickly trade philosophy and my targets for this week. Once again, I'm a super coach player by trade, not a fantasy player by trade, even though fantasy is where I have all my success and fun. Maybe it's because I don't worry about it as much. Who knows? Um, so yeah, I'm going to talk through some of that stuff. I'm happy to answer any questions in the in the comments below you have about my team, but I think there's probably better content creators out there to listen to than me. I'm just going to share my thought process and, and where it's at because I know some people are interested in, in how I'm tracking and what I'm doing. So uh, that's the point of the video. Uh, all right, so the first, uh, firstly, the most important thing about round one is not these points or anything like that. It is if you go to Trade Center, looking at the green here, what you want to see at the end of trade one, I've always said this a fantasy, is just all green, 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 green. Um, so we've got a little bit of red, which we can talk about, but I think this is less red than what I've had in previous years, um, just because no injuries this week or anything like that. So, I mean, Yo lost 1K, LDU lost 1K, and Fisher lost 1k. So they basically scored what they were priced at, like maybe a point under or something like that. And then Wines lost 5k, the biggest loser of the bunch. Um, so that that also like shows me where probably my trade targets are in terms of um, what I need to get rid of. Uh, I would say, it, like with that said, this is a little bit skewed because we got a lot of guys that are in their second week now that had a good score on their first week. So they were going to go up anyway. So like, I mean, Grundy scored poorly, but still went up. So this is a little bit skewed compared to previous years where you've had guys that um, you picked knowing they already had a good score baked in. So of course they went up in price. Uh, is there an easy way to look at most cash gains? You would think so. I'm sure there must be. Because that's, that's the thing you'd, you'd want to look at here um, on this side is who are the players that went up the most in cash that you don't have? Not necessarily looking at primos, but more looking at the mid prices and rookies and then trying to take out some of those guys from round zero because they're the ones that you should be trying to grab uh, in your side, especially if you think the price or the scoring is going to continue that's led to the price rise because they're ultimately going to be the good value ones um, that you want to have in your side to shoot up the cash you know, and shoot up the cash rankings and team value as much as possible. Uh, and once again, like normally I would look at when we go to rankings here, I wouldn't worry about um, where my total rank is. I'd just look at value, but this is going to be very skewed because for example, this team here, I mean, that's probably not an example, but I'll, let's have a look at a top team. So this one's ranked above me and it's got an extra 230 K, which is a huge amount. I'm guessing lots of Gold Coast, Sydney, GWS players in this side. Uh, yeah, so look, in, in like double price rise there. You've got Tukmiller, Viney, Green, Rao, all double price rises. Grundy, yeah, I mean, like, look look at all these players, double price rises. So this team is ranked above me 2,000 spots, and they've got higher team value, but this is a much worse team than mine, and I would, I'm glad I don't own it. So, um, yeah, so normally I would look at value here to figure out how I'm doing, because if I'm leading or I'm up the top of value, then my team's in a good position. Uh, more value is going to lead to more points on field as the season progresses. But yeah, very hard now because we don't all, uh, we're not all on the same footing. So I think it's not until we get out of buys that we're really going to have a good understanding of where we're placed in the pack, which I guess is maybe a little bit more exciting for some. It feels like you get knocked out of the race too early. Whereas uh, yeah, once you get out to round seven, you're going to have everyone that's, you know, taken on early buy plays, all that pricing is going to um, go through the wash. And uh, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. And, you know, the, the pricing and the rises will end up being fair at that point. So I don't think outside of Whitfield, Grundy and Heaney, I don't have many of the guys that have gone to price rises that 
were expensive premiums and those that did jump on the rails greens etc are going to get extra value on their sides and especially if they took on like you know campbells and those types as well uh all right so then trade philosophy for this week what do i need to do to improve my side um, so yeah, I've kind of already touched on it, but I just want to create as much cash and, and generate that as much as possible. Um, the types of players, oh, is it in here that I can look at price movement? Dollars per point is kind of useful. It should tell you something like which rookies and mid prices. Yeah, it's got a few of them. Maybe this is the best view. There has to be a view which tells you, uh, which players move them the most money is it oh stat center this could be it round price change there you go yeah so you can see like all the players that have played two rounds of course they've had the biggest price rises so far and so teams that are stuffed full of more of these are going to end up looking much better than others uh i wish there was a filter to remove those that had two because then it can let you look for the ones that have played just the one game that you should be jumping on um, you, so you can see Oliver Dempsey here is the largest price mover of those that have only played one game. So he's probably a priority for a lot of people. Uh, who else we got in here? I mean, Perkins, this is not a good good pick, I don't think, uh, especially with Parrish coming back. Um, some of these defenders, not really. Who else we got in here? Cherry is obviously, I'd say, a pretty good pick as well at his price. So for those that have Grundy and want to jump off, I don't think you have to jump off. Grundy's um, still got an achievable break even this week. From what I understand, it's like 70s range, which you could definitely do. Essendon has been historically a tough matchup, but he could get there. But yeah, if you don't have uh, Cherry and you do have Grundy, I could see people jumping off Grundy going to Cherry this week. That makes sense to me as a, as a little play there. Uh, and then that gives you the type of money to get someone like a Jai Clark up to a Dempsey. Like that's totally uh, on the cards. Bonner, another one in here as well, which is a pretty, um, yeah, obvious one. A lot of people talked about him. I had him, annoying that I didn't start him. His money went to a good cause though. He's someone you could look at this week. Obviously Sinclair comes back and there's a little bit of concern about what his role looks like with Sinclair back. Does Sinclair go into the mid and Bonner continues to play his role? Or does Sinclair go in defense and Bonner gets more of an accountable role? Or does he just play like a third rebounding half back? Um, all those, I think, are options on the table. Uh, yeah, Jeremy Sharp, another one of those rookies that had a big score that uh, only had the one game so far. And I assume I've gone past McKercher. Yeah, but like everyone should have him. If they don't, you should get him. Um Massimo is another one. Now look, the, I'm I'm been less confident on this pick as the week goes on with old D'Ambrosio. He played just wing. We know wing isn't a conducive role to this type of scoring regularly, but we also don't have many other defender options. And so if you've got a Buderick, then going to something like uh, Massimo, I can see that making a lot of sense because you'll get some price rises out of him anyway, just with the 94 in the average. But I am curious about whether or not this scoring is sustainable. The D's and dogs gave up a lot of marks last week. So look, maybe he will have a decent role back there um, or like getting involved in some of that marking, especially with uh, Sisley out for the week. So he could be a good option, but one that I'm probably happy to wait and see on. Uh, who else is in here? The name sticks out. No one really. Start, starting getting down. I mean, yeah, Fife seems like a good pick. Crouch was the better pick over uh, Oliver in the end. I uh, wish, wish I'd done that, but hey. Uh, all right. So for me then, um, yeah, vaccine cash gen. I've already got Cherry. Um, I've got basically all the rookies here. The one that I don't have is Dempsey. So he's a, a probably a priority trade in for me this week. Um, in terms of like rookies I could trade out, I think Clark's probably the obvious one just because he's got off to a slow start. He probably comes good and I'm not even sure he gets dropped. Uh, but yeah, he's one that I could definitely look to move on. Uh Crows are normally a high stoppage side and he is a CBA mid for them. So there's a very good chance he bounces back this week and I shouldn't trade him. Uh, Lazar is the other one that got lots of CBAs, which is good, but didn't do much with them. Like he had a pretty average to poor game, I would say. So I know he's a, a younger guy that they're keen on and he had a standout preseason and all that type of stuff. But I do wonder if he ends up getting a vest or just dropped this week. I think that's possible, especially if Simkin's returning from that concussion, uh, given that, you know, Simkin played that half forward role, which I think Lazaro goes into at times. So uh, yeah, I think that one of those two going out for Dempsey makes sense for me. And then of those ones that I said that went down in price, like Fisher, Wines, Yo, 
uh, uh, who was my fourth one? Fisher. Oh, uh, LDU. So um, look, LDU had the role that we wanted, 88% time on ground. GWS is going to be one of the tougher mid matchups for the year. So for him to go 98 against them, I'm fine with. Should I have probably started like a green or someone else instead? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Uh, but I'm, I'm okay with LDU. I still think he's going to end up going up in price overall, not down, as long as he stays fit. So I'm happy to hold on to him. Um, Yo had the CBA mid roll that we were hoping for, I think, especially at his price point, that low 600k mark. Yeah. Time on ground was lower than what I would have hoped for, uh, uh, but I think he was the second highest scoring West Coast player, and they went up against Port, who is one of the most restrictive sides across the comp when it comes to fantasy scoring. I think West Coast is still going to be poor this year and are going to be a lower scoring team in general, but against sides where they can get a little bit of bigger share of the pie and be in the game a bit more, um, then Yo should ultimately end up being better than what he is. Yeah, hello. You're getting involved, are you? Um, I don't think anyone asked you to be in the video. Come on, Den, jump. Uh, so, yes, yeah, she's not going to go away now unless I give her pats out of you while talking super uh, fantasy. So yeah, so Yo, I'm pretty comfortable with, especially given that the defender roles that we have aren't particularly great. I think if Massimo goes big next week and Yo has another poor week, uh, then look, Yo to Massimo could make sense, but I'm not like overly keen for that. And I definitely wouldn't be doing it this week. Um, yep. And then um, Fisher. So Fisher had the role, I guess, that we're hoping for. Ball just wasn't used out of that side. They definitely looked for Sheasel and McCurcher more than Fisher. Plus, Fisher had a few mistakes where he could have ended up probably getting closer to an 80 than what this was. I think he was only the, uh, like on 41 at half time. And if he'd end up in the 80s, we wouldn't be really that worried about him at all. But the fact it was a 68 um, is a bit rough. Uh, we'll see how we go against Freo this week. I don't think Freo have typically been the best side to score against, but um, could be all right. And then that leaves Wines for me where he had less CBAs than what we would have wanted and the time on ground wasn't great. You know, picked him because we got these soft matchups, West Coast, Tigers, um, uh, Ds as well, like in terms of midfield matchups, he's a pretty good Essendon as well. But given that he only put up that against West Coast, uh, was pretty concerning. Like he was okay at stoppages, I found, but a lot of that game was in transition, which I think is port style. Uh, not all the time, but like there will be parts of that. And you can say that they were looking for Rosie, Butters, Juan Francis, these damaging types that can burst and open up the ground. And Wines isn't any of those. So yeah, lower stoppage side than a crouch, less CBAs than what we were told would happen. Ouch. So I think Bonner, uh, sorry, uh, Wines is the one that moves out this week for me. And then in terms of who to come in uh, for Wines, I think Bonner and Billings are probably my top two at the moment in terms of what I would look for. So, I mean, we can just start mucking around with this now. Doing trade live, uh, trades live with this is always funny though because it just seems to muck up, or I seem to muck it up every time. So, can I move? I should be able to uh, pick this right. Oh, yep, swap, swap uh, Reed or Wilson into my mids. Let's go Wilson, why not? And then we will add in, I think... Billings is where I'm leaning at the moment. Uh, and then 190K off the back of that, which gives me enough money to turn something like a Clark, trade him out, uh, put Reed into the midfield then. Uh, and it lets me get Dempsey as well, just to get that cash gen going. I don't think Clark is a must trade out, especially if he holds, but just, you know, I've kind of got the luxury of jumping on these price rises, which works for me and this leaves me 131k in the bank which is pretty nice because if i do need to jump on massimo um uh, bonner next week i can uh, or it lets me maybe do something with grundy if he has a second poor week in a row and i can um, look at getting off him next week which might be the case so uh all right um most important thing is oh what happened to the add-on i swear i had an add-on did I not that that uh, auto sorts? Oh, maybe it's gone. Oh, there we go. Yes, sort. Sort by price. All right. Because um, if your team's not sorted by price, it should be an invalid entry and you're not eligible to win at all. 
All right. So in terms of like rookies and captain and vice captain this week, haven't really looked at it too much. Oh, that's interesting. It kept my um, Tristan Cherry E and Barnett C loophole active. Um, crazy. Oh, it didn't. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't seem to muck around with anyone that has ease. All right, that's right. It's price sorted, it's fine. Um, so I need to think about who I want to field and who not to. Um, for this week, and I haven't really looked at fixtures that much or anything like that. Uh, what dogs just gave up a bunch of marks to the uh, D's. So uh, Sexton, I think I want to um field this week. Dempsey's got the Crows. It should be a tough matchup. Cadman's got a nice matchup against the West Coast Eagles. And he is someone that could have a spike game. So somewhat interested in getting him onto field a little bit. Um, Sharp's got North this week. And we saw North just give up a bunch of points to GWS. Um, their mids, you know, they're playing that outside kind of shoot him game. So yeah, like, Sharp, I like, um, like Sanders, I'm probably off this week, just given that he got subbed out and the Suns look to be a tougher matchup. Reed's got GWS, which looks to be a tougher matchup, unless you are a half back like McKercher and Sheasel. Uh, and look, Harley Reed has been going now back, so could he end up being a, a good option this week? Yeah, possibly. Uh, Wilson, I'm not sure if I love him against um, uh, the Pies, the G. So who do I end up fielding here? This is a bit tricky. I could go something like maybe I take off um, Wilson for like a Cadman. It's best 18 week this week. So he could have a big score like and be worthwhile fielding against the Eagles. I should check to see how big the other scores against the Eagles were from the forwards because obviously they do have some defenders in McGovern and Barras that can actually hold key tools, which... North don't really have. Um, but yeah, this is kind of what I'm, I'm weighing up this week as to which of these like rookies to have on field and who to bench. And then, yeah, I think Dempsey, Billings and Bonner are probably my top three priorities this week. But depending on your side and your structure, I think Cherry, um, uh, D'Ambrosio, Sharp all make sense as other options as well. Uh, but yeah, just final thoughts here is maximize that cash gen and uh, keep that humming along nicely and things will be all right. Oh, the other thing we need to talk about is um, captain, vice captain, don't we? So what Dacos has Saints, uh, that's probably a pretty good vice captain option again. Mm, that's probably good for Butters. Uh, LDU, no, probably not. So maybe Butters here. Gee, I really don't have a ton of uh, other like captain options. West Coast here. Uh Clark did really well, didn't he? No, I'm thinking the wrong game. Who did West Coast play? They played Port. Uh, Houston didn't do all that, that well, like Farrell and um, Burton did, though. I mean, maybe it's like Whitfield is considered here. But I'm, I am like, I can't see a way that I'm not going Dacos. Uh, and then maybe it's maybe it's Butters C, but we'll see. We'll see who the C goes on. Ha, ha, ha. So yeah, that's uh, that's the fantasy side. If you got suggestions, especially around which rookies I should start and bench, that would be great to know. If uh, if you've got trades you'd like me to weigh on in on, I can uh, try my best to give them the tick. But I don't know if you should be taking advice from me necessarily. Otherwise, um, that's all we've got for this one, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.